What excitement should we get into today? Oh, my bad. Oh, shit, that means the mic's probably going to be out of sync now. Let me know if the mic's off by like five seconds. That shit happens. I've been messing around with my laptop, and I have to reconfigure all the sound settings to... Um, here back. Can't wait. I love this stuff. Said something exciting by just not crashing. What happens? Like five, the first five seconds. <laughs> I think I was on for a minute. That's crazy. Uh, Yeehaw! Apparently, that was probably just the very end of the arc fall anyway, so. outside of the Earth Republic's authority. I know where to go. Let's roll. What's up, Snack? Let's go. These things don't start themselves. This is great. Let's go. These things don't start themselves. What have you got me going across the street for?
this one. Is that it? I guess so. Okay. Cool. Bitch. You've got a new outfit. You can swap to it at any time. Oh, check me out! Anybody else needs their ass kicked before I go? Just saying. There are people here who need to be rescued. Ereb needs people like you. Help! This is not what I signed on for! Me Thought neither. I was a goner. Shut up, bitch. Thanks, pal. You won't regret this. Set me free! I can fight! Thanks, pal. You won't regret this. Get me out of here! Thanks, pal. You won't regret this. I gotta rescue you 37 times. To rescue you once, apparently. Man, it's gonna have me drive all the way the hell around there. No, I don't think so. Ready to roll. Who needs roads when you have one of these? I'm detecting a lot of movement right under your feet. We need to get the survivors out of here as fast as we can. What the hell is that right there? Man, look at this thing right here. Man, screw those survivors. Look at this. This looks like a ramp. No, not really. I don't see how you can get a real good running start on that. And they disappear. Right, of course they did. Of course they did. I miss when you've already meleeed me, even though you haven't meleeed me yet, right?
There are materials here that we need to collect. We got more Hellbugs incoming! Grenade's better than yours. <laughs> oh. What should we play next, guys? Still can't trust the servers on this one. There's a mission I need completed, but it's no job for a soldier. It demands someone with your level of, uh, well, recklessness. Yeehaw! I know where to go. Let's roll. The consoles are down, so let's get them working. on their way. Let's go, big guy. That one is tougher than the others. You got to be kidding. Excellent job. Glad you're on our side. I think I did more work than they did on that one. <laughs> I really do. Ready to roll.
bitch. Breaking my buggy. I'm just gonna just I'm not just gonna stand for you breaking my buggy at it. Let's get some wheels. <laughs> when you blow up your buggy, it makes you pay for it. You have to wait. Way the hell over there are materials here that we need to collect. No, we don't need to collect anything. You are free to collect materials. I'm going over here. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Actually, I'm not. Charging me, ho? <laughs> I was charging. Careful. We got a lot more hellbugs on their way. So you done? That's the sample we need. Nice work. Sample successfully harvested. That's the sample we need. Nice work. Sample extracted. Sample extracted. Sample successfully harvested. We're pretty good at this, huh? We? Let's get some wheels. Uh, I, I guess. I guess. I guess we're pretty good at this, yeah. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's like Borderlands Online, basically. It's got a lot of similarities to Borderlands. The shields, the weapons, uh, the gameplay, driving around.
can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, I'm, I think I'm done. Even trying. Oh, they got my support. Waste of money. Um, well, everything it's capable of doing is irrelevant if the game is going to crash constantly. Three, four minutes. Then you might play problem free every once in a while. You can't, you can't confidently do anything without in the back of your head assuming it's going to crash at any minute and, re and rip you off and take your rewards from you and um, cheat you of your progress. Right? You don't get anything for that. This guy will get paid for that. I won't. It's Well, it crashes more often than not. Yesterday we got a couple hours straight. I was really surprised and then it kicked me. But I mean, like, this isn't getting kicked. This isn't getting kicked out of the server. This is the game crashing. This is the game itself being so unstable. That's not even a server issue right there. That's not a server thing. That's the game fucking crashing. You have to fix that. You have to fix that. Uh, who's going to give a game a chance that they never even heard of in the first place? Okay, so it's on Xbox One, so you make it really heavy quotes free to play. Okay, so that might entice some people to come in and play. When they realize it's fun, they'll give you some money. But when they go to play, it crash. They pick up the crash, crash. It crashes during crashing, crashing while it crashes. And as you're crashed, it fucking crashes again before you can bring it back up again. No, fuck that. How many, who's going to tolerate that? For any period of time. It, every MMO is going to have it issues. But if you can't get your shit straight in a week, you shouldn't have put your game up in the first place. You should have tested that shit a little longer. Sorry. That's just the way it is. No, no fucking excuse for that. No fucking excuse. This game came out on what? Yeah, it's been a week. Yeah, it's been a week. It's uh, potentially a lot of fun too, but this, yeah. The, who, who cares? This game is not going to get off the ground like this. It's not. It's just not. People are playing it. Some people apparently are not having a whole lot of issues. Apparently the PS4 users don't have a whole lot of problems. But their Xbox One version of it is just garbage. It's fucking trash. What a shame. Well, I'm going to go play something else, I guess. Uh, that's what I was asking, Sniper. What are we playing next, man? I don't know. I hate to say it, but it's, it's kind of getting to that saturated point where we've kind of done everything. Sometimes it's fun to just play shit. Okay, great. But, like, I'm sitting here trying to think, is there anything I've, I haven't done in any games? Like, is there any something that I haven't tried? Like, a particular class or something. There's a few things I haven't tried for a reason, because I don't want to do them. They wouldn't be fun. They would fucking suck. So, you know, that's one thing. But, uh, I don't know, man. This is a really good game for friends, too. You get buddies in there, and you just run around, and you just help each other do quests and get loot. And You know, I think you can trade items. You used to be able to trade items anyway, you know. So, like, I pick up a really sexy-ass machine gun, and someone else picks up a really badass sniper. Swap out, you know. Or, or, or give somebody some money for something. Just buy it from them, you know. And I remember, you used to be able to do that, if I remember right. It's been some years. It's been four or five years since the first one came out but anyway um hmm. uh, i'm not giving this it it crashed in 30 seconds then it crashed in 20 minutes so i'm not going to crash three times an hour and, and lose half of whatever i'm doing i'm just not going to do that I may pick this up again in about a week. And if a week from now it's still the same issues, you won't, probably won't see me touch this again. Regardless, regardless of its potential. It's just... I don't know, man. If I, came, if I came over to your house and you came to my place of business paying for a service and it was never complete, ever, you would stop hiring me, wouldn't you? Unless you're an idiot. I guess. Maybe you'd just keep giving me money for trash. Maybe. But most likely you would probably say, look, you don't know how to do what you're 
supposed to be doing. So I'm going to have to go to somebody who does. Well, true enough, nobody really seems to be know how to make, make games anymore, but that's why we go back and play the old ones, man. Hmm. I have to give it some thought, man. I don't, I don't know. I'm just kind of hands up in the air. You guys aren't helping me for shit on that either, by the way. This is your third stream in a row. Hey, guys. What, what, silence. Crickets. If you keep getting crickets from people, well, then what does that say? Constantly? <laughs> I was messing around with some mods on my PC version of New Vegas, which gameplay-wise isn't really a whole lot different than the normal one. I have a few weapon mod mods that allow you to put like silencers on nine millimeters and stuff you know cool stuff that you should be able to do in the first place i think and uh found out there's a way to make the um all the i mean we we played uh what i call the tiny guns only only like nine millimeters and stuff it would work with the bb gun too although <coughs> it would work with the bb gun but uh you know like the varmint rifle and the nine millimeter pistol and Nine millimeter SMG, twenty gauge shotgun if you want, you know, type of things like that. But uh, you know, the the small guns and to make them uh, much stronger. There's some pretty cool perks. Good way to build your character, but I don't really. Well, yeah, I don't know. If I haven't played it yet, it's because I don't want to. Believe me, I've been scraping for games to look into. I've looked into a few that. I probably wouldn't have considered otherwise. You know, like Divinity 2 Original Sin. That's not my style of play. I don't... I'm not a big fan of games like that. Games that are like that. You know, from an RPG perspective, it's great. That There is Divinity 2 Dragon Knight Saga, which, uh, due to technical issues, we never really finished. But uh, cool. the bad part about that is you can't put it on its hardest difficulty because it breaks the game. And I don't, I don't mean it breaks the difficulty of the game. I mean it does something um, in the scripting where the game just starts going all over the place. Like it, it, gets, it gets impossible, then it, stay, then it gets hard, and then it gets super, super easy. But, and I'm not talking about different parts of the game. I'm talking about the same part of the game. Like you'll go into a fight and die instantly without even getting hit and go into that same fight and one-shot everything and then go into another fight and it'll just be sort of difficult. And it's like, like each time you like either go through a loading screen or something, the, the difficulty changes to 20 settings above its maximum difficulty or five or 10 settings below its easiest one. And it just does this shit like every, every few minutes. It's, it's, it's all over the map. You don't have like, you can't really build a character or play the game because at any given moment, something that can't ever kill you kills you instantly and something that you can't possibly kill you one shot it before you even hit it and you'd be like what the fuck you know it's just broken it's just it's it's a difficulty they released in a in a later update of the game i think it came with like dlc version of the game and it doesn't work it might work on pc maybe you know and they just assumed it would work on console too and apparently they're not supporting that game anymore so that kind of stuff but on its, on its original hard mode, it, it basically had easy, normal, hard. Now it's got easy, normal, hard, nightmare. And the nightmare doesn't work. That's a, but I just like being in that game. Some of you, a few of you guys like it. Most of you don't. Most of, I mean, well, I only say that because when we're streaming, the, the, what seems to be most popular with you guys is Fallout 4. And I'm like, Maybe it's just because it's chill just sitting around building shit. Because other than that, what is there to that game? But, you know, we've tried, we never did finish a minigun run. We never did finish that. We stopped because of uh, uh, the game, uh, the game bugged out on a quest pertaining to the minigun. We hadn't had a single glitch or bug like that entire game. Until we got to the one where you get the special minigun and it was unfinishable. They made it unfinishable. The guy had to do something to 
finish to um, Hancock's friend, right? Bobby No Nos and shit. And that guy got glitched. He got glitched hostile. He was hostile, so, uh, but he, he couldn't attack anymore because he was supposed to be in a cutscene. But he couldn't do the cutscene because he was considered hostile. And the game stuck that way instead of refreshing itself. Man, I tried everything we could to reload and do what I could. Nah, nothing worked. But uh, that's about the only thing we haven't ever just done done. Was kept, made a minigun viable through the whole game. Up to that point, we were good and we were already, we were already up there. I don't remember what level we were exactly. We were, we, we, we'd been going for a while. We made that minigun count. I got one of the uh, ammo crafting mods so you could make five millimeter. It wasn't cheap. You had to have uh, a bunch of steel, fertilizer, and some uh, wood or so, or so. I don't forget what it was. Steel, fertilizer, and something. Anyway, but we had, uh, you know, and then you and then on survival, you got to figure a way to carry that shit. So, you know, you've got. 10,000 rounds, which weighs about the equivalent of a thousand rounds of something else. Um, so, you know, it's still viable, but your, you know, your minigun's heavy as shit anyway. And then you've got, you know, another, what, 100 units of weight just in ammo and shit. <laughs> but, uh, This is actually what I planned on playing. When I knew this was coming out, I'm like, I remember the first one being fun, and I'm like, if this works, you know, if it plays, the first one had its crashing issues. All MMOs do, but the first one never got better. It got playable, finally, after a month, you know. Uh, but they never had the money, I don't think, to keep the servers, you know, just to be constantly working like you have to do with an MMO. You just have to. I don't think they had the money. I don't think they had the resources or the people or whatever. And so here they tried again. And I think they, they cut out some stuff. There's like like area chat isn't in here. You know, the audio for area chat. They cut out some things. The, the PvP I don't think is in here yet. It's probably something they plan on putting in later. Area chat may be a thing later too. But uh, they cut out some stuff. So there's not as much strain, I think. They try to simplify it still. Fucking, I don't know. When the game copy itself can't keep it from crashing every 30 minutes. That's just, I don't know. Anyway, um, there is a minigun. I was looking at a gun, too, uh, a gun mod. It was the AUG. Good looking weapon, got high ratings, supposed to be. It's not even available to your level 25. You're, you're done. Game's over. <laughs> Level 25, you're, you're already fucking in the Institute, you know? Before you even get to pick up the weapon, I don't... I want to play with a weaker version of the weapon from the starting of the game. That's what I want to do. Scale that shit down, you know? Give me... give me Now, there's damage options on the AUG. You can apparently reduce the damage by 50%, you know? So to keep it stable and balanced, that's fine. That's great, but I still can't have it till I'm fucking already past the glowing sea. Screw that. Well, that's, that just doesn't even make sense. Um, minigun, though. Anytime I start Fallout 4 game to do something, it's 80% building settlements and trying new shit. And then 20% actually fucking with whatever weapon is I'm, whatever new weapon I have to play with. That's usually how that goes. Um. Well, we could always play Skyrim. Make an orc named Lublub. <laughs> Lublub. That's my new... Orc name, and I, I can't, I don't think I can ever name an orc anything else. Lub Lub. 
once I thought of that, I'm like, that's, that's just so awesome. I, I can't do anything but that now. So I am sitting here with my thumb in my ass, not knowing what to do. Hmm. played Oblivion so many different ways I can't even think of how to play like, I mean like I, I mean like just what we've done everything just a dagger no weapons just magic no armor no weapons no armor think about Oblivion though one one I'd say setback is that when you put it on max difficulty, it's not one of those where you say, okay, I'm just like not going to use magic or I'm not going to do this. You get away with not using weapons because magic is designed for that. But if you're going to use weapons, if you're going to build around that, not using magic as a buff, you just can't. You got to at least have a summons. You, I, you really just do. Are you just, you're just going to die all the time. Because everything one shot you, everything. Pretty much for the a majority of the game, you know. The Witcher, man, I'm can't get into it. I can't get into it. I'm not gonna lie. I'd like to sit here and say, yeah, yeah, I want to be excited for the, like that. I. It's still sitting on my shelf. It's just sitting there. I'm maybe one day when I'm just playing, just like like nothing else to do type thing, throw that in there and maybe find some way to get into it, but I don't know. No, a lot of people it's one of their favorite games with me. Witcher two was okay for lack of anything else to play at the time, which is what I it's what it was when I played it on three sixty. And it was it was okay. Played it through more than once, more for just difficulty stuff. Get get a few achievements, you know, but wasn't, uh, from what I understand, like, if you read the books and you're into the lore, if you're not into the lore, I don't know that The Witcher's going to interest you a whole lot. Maybe it would anyway. The gameplay doesn't do a lot for me. Not really. It's, um, <clears throat> what would I consider it? All right. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. You know, I, I really, the the combat in The Witcher is kind of like Clunky Souls to me. It's not Dark Souls. It's Clunky Souls. It's 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 not so smooth and natural. Honestly, if Witcher had like Dark Souls combat, which it really needs, it needs. What I mean is is the smooth rolling dodge evade, you know, this type of stuff. Um, you can throw in the stuff where you know. You don't get invincibility frames and whatever and you know because i know in witcher you have skills where it just reduces damage when you're rolling and stuff so you can use it as sort of an evade right but um it's more for maneuvering but the same feel that dark souls has very natural when you lock on in dark souls it's natural when you roll around and and, and your move sets with your weapons are natural they just feel natural, look natural. The timing, it's something that you kind of grow into. The Witcher is, gameplay-wise, a little clunky to me. And that's not, not, honestly, that's not even criticizing the game. That's just my experience with it. It's like, okay, um, you take a game where I'm like, um, 
um, where I'm like the lore. Okay, it's it's a preset story. You're you're kind of playing out the story. You're really not even so much interacting with the story, even though you're making decisions that decide the outcome of everybody. The story itself is kind of sort of set in stone. So you're just kind of observing it and you're in the game as an excuse to watch the story. Now, if the story's interesting to you, it's gonna be amazing, right? But if you're like, okay, kind of in here just to see what's going on type thing, uh, games are gonna do one of two things. Either they're gonna grab me and make me play to where I can't stop playing or they're not and that's it and that game just never does it never it never says you know this is why you need to play this I'm like no I don't know I guess maybe it's kind of hard to invest in a game where you, you it's an RPG but you're not ma you're not making your own character you're playing a preset you're playing somebody else's character it's like me picking up fallout over at your house and playing your character I will make my own character even I don't care if it's just like your character whatever but it, you know what I mean like it's not just I'm playing your character but I'm playing your level 25 character where you've already picked all your shit and I'm just kind of just playing into it I don't want to do that I want to make my own I want to do my own thing I want to establish my own little stuff so that's just that's just the, the vibe I get from uh, Witcher 2 was like that too but at the time it was like different it was difficult Witcher 2 was harder than Witcher 3 much harder. You go and you set it on max difficulty. You, at the very beginning of the game, you're just like, holy shit. It's a wake-up call. Like, you're getting slapped around. You know, you're getting kill killed quick. And you're like, okay. Okay, there's, there's something to this. Oh, oh shit, Nick. Oh, I know. You won't get any argument. I, I, you won't hear me defend Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is a travesty. It's not even an RPG. It's, it's an action shooter builder. Minecraft set in a mock wannabe Fallout universe that's really not. Uh, it's I, Man, I could go on for forever criticizing that piece of shit. I like building in that game. And it's fun to run around with new guns. That's why mods are the only thing that make it semi-playable. No, 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 yeah, don't even, I wouldn't put those in the same category. That's like comparing steak to rotten hamburger that your cat won't fucking eat. It's like comparing Witcher 3 to Fallout 4. They're not even in the same, no. You wouldn't find Fallout 4 in the trash can out back of CD Projekt Red because it wouldn't be in their fucking building in the first place. You know what I'm saying? They announced a new Witcher? That's interesting. I'm kind of surprised because they said they were done with the Witcher. That's what they said. I don't know why they would come out with a new one. Unless they take you back at some point in the game and let you play somebody. Um... Hey, let's go look. I got an idea since I'm sick of this shit right now. Uh, Doing's War in the North, I think it's called. Let's see if this is around. I know some of you guys probably haven't even played this. S some of you have, but. Lord of the Rings. Okay, I don't know. It's not backwards compatible, is it?
But why you got movies up in the game section too, stupid bitches? Games, bitch. That's why I came to games. Oh well. Now there's a. Uh... What's up, Justin? Um, there's a game, Lord of the Rings: War in the North. But it's obviously not backwards compatible. Well, that doesn't mean it's not backwards compatible just because it's not being sold. I don't know if I still have the physical copy of it. I... physical copy. Shit. Never mind. Well, that was a thought. Go plug in the 360 for that. If you guys haven't played it though, you ought to go check that out. Lord of the Rings War in the North. It's a Dragon Age 2 style combat. Uh, it's kind of got a Dragon Age 2 kind of feel to it just all the way around really. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm just sitting here. If you want to go, oh, dude, why are you just standing there? I have no idea what to go do right now. Let me, uh, no, not go do that. This will be the first money that Bethesda doesn't get from me. What's this? What do you call that? A hack and slash shooter? Instead of hacking and slashing, you're shooting? Same thing. Well, I don't know. I was looking for some outfit setups for Atomic Beauty. Which is, I think, I, I think it's my favorite body model. But uh, there's really not a lot out there. Got support for why they, the modders are not supporting Fallout 4 anymore. I'm not saying there's no mods being made for it, but they're not supporting the game. There's nothing new. You don't have whole flocks of hairstyles and, and more outfits too many outfits to even choose from for particular body models like CBBE and Atomic Beauty should each have by now six seven hundred sets of armor clothing standalone stuff individual sets you know a conversions there's there was one or two attempts at conversions from Skyrim but not really a few here and there bullshit They're still, they're still making mods for Skyrim. Like, okay, so it's Skyrim Special Edition. It's still Skyrim. It's still the same game, right? Whatever. Uh, one thing when they came out with Special Edition, it was basically an opportunity to go remake a lot of the original mods and then add some more to it. You know, you took, you took a lot out of the graphical requirements in the game because the Special Edition includes a lot of things that modders had previously done, you know? don't really need an ENB and all kinds of texture updates. And there's a few texture mods that you can, you know, graphics packs and things, but not so necessary like they were before. A lot of other things that modders could do, and they still are. Skyrim, and it's barely an RPG. I don't, still don't really call it an RPG, but it's sort of one. It's, it, it's like Skyrim used to be one. Very watered down RPG. Okay. Fallout 4 is not an RPG.
No. Oh, they just like running around there with naked chicks and stuff. Fighting dragons. You know, whatever. Okay, that's cool. I mean, if you enjoy that, that's great. So. Guys, I played Fallout 3 in New Vegas into the ground, man. Just played him to death. Played a lot of games to death. I would say I just need to take a break, but I don't really want to. I want to play something. I just don't know what. Nothing's, like, I don't have an idea. Like, okay, I've got these games here. What do I go do? Don't really know. I mean, when we played Fallout 3 and we ran around with no armor and no weapons, just running around punching and knocking out super mutants, that shit was fun. But... You only do that so many times before it actually got too easy. It got boring. So, I mean, it was still funny, but at the same token, it was the same thing. I wish they at least had some really cool hand-to-hand uh, -hand animations for Fallout 3. At least the vanilla Fallout 3. They probably have Kung Fu Ninja stuff on mods. I'm sure they do, but... Uh. I don't know. Try to find so much. I, it's already crashed on me twice. I, insanity is repeating the same thing, hoping for a different result. No. No. I'm going to end the stream, which I basically ended the stream 30 minutes ago. I've just been sitting here talking with you guys. For some ideas. Man, I wish, you know what I wish? I wish, uh, I wish the 10 millimeter SMG worked for this. Well, I mean, it works, but I wish it didn't look so bad in first person. It, it, it ruins itself. That is the one mod where it's a good one. It's a good one, but it, uh, the first person mesh on that thing, the gun is like this big. I mean, it's like, it's like four feet wide, 32 feet long. It's like aiming down the sights of a missile launcher or a minigun. I'm, I'm not even kidding. It's that bad. But other than third person, the game looks perfect. What the guy, the animations he's using, required to make the gun mesh as big as the handmade rifle, which is double the length and size of a 10 millimeter SMG, right? In order to make the hand fit right to where it more or less looks like it's grabbing the clip and replacing the clip, reloads. Reloads is the main thing. And when you're holding the gun, you don't want to hold the gun with the with the with the clip going through your hand. It has to fit. Apparently, that was the issue. So he had to adjust the mesh accordingly. So the mesh turned out to be fucking bigger than a Barrett 50 cal. Stupid. Looks good. I mean, it looks really good in third person. It looks part. It looks like Fallout 3, 10 millimeter SMG. It's it's basically perfect. Size everything. It's just it, the way you hold it in your hand. You're not you're not even holding it like a pistol, which used to really annoy me in New Vegas and uh, Fallout Three. I hated that holding the 10 millimeter SMG like a pistol. That annoyed me. Um, so I I like this is that you hold it normal, but then when you get into first person, that's just just chonga beefy ridiculous. Yeah. I don't, I don't have the modding skills to get in there and fix a first-person mesh or create a custom animation to make it work. Although, I wonder that the guy couldn't have just borrowed some animations from somebody else from a gun that's similar. Can't really think of what. Not the P90, because the P90 has a clip over the top. That's a cool gun to play with, but it's got like 50 audio glitches. It makes your feet run like this. I'm not exaggerating. If you're in first person running with the gun, your feet go like this. You sound like, uh, uh, who is it that, take, that takes off and then shoots off in the cartoons? You know? You know what I'm talking about? You're running like that in the game. It's, 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 cl it's clownish. It's like you're trying to play and it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's funny the first time and then you're like, I, I'm not going to play like this. And I guess unless you turn the sound of your footsteps off entirely, I guess there's that. 
I don't know. But that's a really made, really well made weapon, and it feels right. It looks right in third person and first person. It's almost, but it's all custom. Everything's custom. The file size on that thing is like the equivalent of two other, three other weapons combined. Because it's got all kinds of different parts and colors and animation and all this other cool shit. But uh, the dude came in with all these audio files for no reason and just fucked up his mod and then left it like that. And then when people got on there like, this thing is perfect except for this and this ruins it. This is like you spending 10 years and a million dollars putting together a beautiful mansion and then setting that shit on fire the next day. The fuck you do that for? It's like exactly what he did and then just left it that way. Like, dude, just take the audio files out or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to play that. I need a new gun. Skyrim kind of burned on that too, to be honest. Could get the place wherever mod though. I never, you know, I, did, I still never used that. Was the place, place anywhere when you're building? I would like to try that, the place anywhere. Don't have to get out of control, but I think it would save time building to just put shit, be able to overlap stuff and just, I mean, can, with the place anywhere mod, basically is the item always green? In other words, you could put, uh, you could fucking put a, a prefab house in the middle of another house and leave it there and build it there and it'll go there. You may not be able to walk through it, but it'll actually go there. Is it that type of thing? Or is it just like, does it just remove some of the collisions between the stuff? Or can you literally put anything anywhere? Because that actually sounds time-saving. I do like building in Fallout, Fallout 4. I'm not, I'm not... Yeah, I have Kingdoms of Amalek. It's too easy, dude. It's, it's boring easy. Like, I mean, it's not like, oh, it's, it's not game enough for me because I'm a bad... No, on its very hard setting, it's fucking easy. Like, if you build... If you use any crafting ever at any point in the game, you you break it. Build a build a pair of daggers with some basic, I don't know, fire enchantment on them at level five and use that shit in the end game. Like, literally. It's it's got a great skill system. It's got a great crafting system. It's one of the better designed games I've ever seen. Um, it's a little big in scope. They really didn't have enough stuff to fill the game world that they created. They created all this open space to put collectibles in. I get that, but you had so much open space that it started to be harassing assholes running up to you and saying, please, my toilet paper is my right hand and I only wipe with my left hand. Please wipe my butt for me. Pull my toilet paper out of my right hand and put it in my left hand for me. Then guide my hand to my butt and then move it up and down so I can wipe myself. Literally, because there's just, they run out of, obviously run out of ideas of things to do. There's like a story in each one, vaguely. And, um, you know, the, the fighting's fun. The animations are beautiful. The skills are, the skill trees are amazing. But there wasn't enough, enough, uh, um, balance or challenge in the game to compensate for all the shit they give you. It's kind of like Skyrim. Here's 380 perks you don't fucking need. If you don't pick any of them, you can still kill everything. But here's 380 perks to go kill it faster. To be more invincible. I mean, why? You know? But if, if the game balanced to where, um, ideally, and, it's, and it's, I'm kind of surprised Kingdoms of Amalur didn't do this, because um, one of the lead designers, Ken Ralston, was responsible for Oblivion, which is the ultimate in, if you crank the difficulty all the way up, you have to use everything in the game that's available to you. So, Kingdoms of Amalur, when you crank it up, you don't really have to use anything in the game that's available to you. What they needed was another difficulty setting that in order to effectively play on that setting, you need to understand all of the crafting and you need to understand all of your skills. If you don't have good synergy in your skills and you didn't build a, a, even a half-assed decent character and 
enchant your shit properly, enchant your armor a certain way, enchant your weapon a certain way to where it worked with your skills, your skills worked with your gear, vice versa, everything, you know, like if you were going towards criticals, every, all of your skills were geared towards critical, all your armor, all your weapons were geared towards critical stuff, right? To where you would need that to kill anything or else you'd get destroyed. That's how, th that's the difficulty setting they needed for Kingdoms of Amalur to make crafting useful because it was it was just overkill as soon as you made it you're like wow i can craft all these gems and shit and i can i can min max my skill tree and shit and the points that they gave you to distribute were fine-tuned to where you had to make sacrifices if you want this you couldn't have that too if you wanted both of these you weren't going to get anything in that tree and get the benefits of having all those trees unlocked and if you wanted this thing right here for having so many points in each tree you realize that if you put the three points in each of these trees that you needed to unlock this card, you couldn't get that last skill over here in the first tree that you really had to have. You, you know what I'm saying? And so it was like, it was, it was really well designed. So you could really create and build a character. And then they got a difficulty setting which made all of that completely pointless because you didn't need any of it. I, you could almost walk through the game without leveling up. I'm exaggerating there, but... You know, it was just, it didn't serve any purpose. You know, it was just, it was beyond overkill. You know, you're, you're not just one-shotting everything. You know, you're just walking through the game then, and the fights become pointless, you know. And a long, drawn-out fight where you see the reward of your labor in that an enemy that you can't kill unless you're putting up those 1,600 criticals with your greatsword, you're putting up those 12,000 criticals with your firebombs as a mage, because this enemy over here has immunities and resistances and all these hit points and he can still two-shot you regardless. You know, on hard mode, I think there's like three enemies in the entire game that potentially can do that to you. You got that one fucking elf with the, uh, with the fey blades that can make you bleed to death really quick. Okay, he's a hard enemy. Every enemy in the game should be like that on hard mode. Requiring you to craft, requiring you to optimize your armor, optimize your gem crafting, optimize your skills so you can switch out your gems and make better gems and optimize all of your smithing and optimize all the stuff that they give you in order to just not die. That's how it should have been. They should have had a difficulty setting for that. And I think uh, big, huge studios or Studio 30 or whoever, whatever they called themselves, I think they folded before they could support the game the way they wanted to. Not only did they have two more games planned, but they probably had updates and patches and things. I would assume that had it not been obvious, had the game not failed in the first place because of EA, and had the studios not folded because of EA, um, I'm assuming they would have stayed around and supported that game because the people that made that game, like Kurt Schilling, do you know all the money he made from being like a Hall of Fame pitcher and shit? In Major League Baseball, he invest, He went bankrupt. He invested everything he had into making that game because that was his vision. Like, this was a guy who played, like, World of Warcraft and stuff like this. It was this an RPG-minded guy who wanted to make the biggest, best RPG series ever. That doesn't mean it would have been that, but that was his vision. That's what, he, that's what he was trying to do. That's why you fucking make games. Or you should. And he, they had it right. He went and got Ken Ralston because of Oblivion and like, Fallout 3. Right, he went and got like, Todd McFarlane. Went and got you know all these um, music composers and writers and and game designers and developers and artists and all these people that that did things that he respected and recognized in all these different industries and brought them all into his game for a huge sum of money he basically didn't have and just said let's make the biggest shit to where this game it can't fail it'll be so awesome it can't fail that was the idea. You know, and had they had another game under their belt, I don't know that they wouldn't have actually achieved that because the heart and the passion was there. Maybe that made somebody else in the game industry jealous. Well, these people over here actually have some nuts and I've got a small dick and really big tires on my truck. So we need to make sure that their game flops, they fail. We need to we'll pay everybody to either not talk about their game or to give it a two out of 10 rating before it ever even comes out and then refuse to let them advertise it so nobody hears about it so it guarantees flops and fails. And then somebody snitched them off and they got into some kind of tax troubles which essentially basically wasn't their fault. 
it was but wasn't. Um, I would say their lawyers dropped the ball or lack of having attorneys, which is foolish. But I don't think they realized they came into a snake pit. Already being, being in bed with herpes AIDS infected ass EA didn't help right off the top. That was sure to sabotage the shit out of anything. But they, they needed a publisher. They needed to put that shit out there and everything came back to bite them in the bass, bite them in the ass. And once everybody got their money back, left them holding the bag with bankruptcy and lawsuits and shit like that, trying to pay off these people like um, Salvatore, the, the writer, he wrote all three games. They didn't have him just write Kingdoms of Amalur. He wrote the two sequels too. I don't know that he ever finally got paid off what he was supposed to get paid for, for that. I don't know if he did. The music composer apparently had some legal issue too on getting paid for his work. All that music and all that shit. All the sound effects and whatever else he was, he was a part of. Yeah, that was just a fucking disaster. Yeah, Inquisition, Inquisition too. But they just watered that down though. That wasn't, that wasn't lack of experience. Because you got Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. They know what Nightmare is. It's what it's always been. They took the formula for success, right? Rubbed their dick with it and then threw it out the window while they were driving 100 miles an hour down the freeway and never looked back. Their formula for success. This is what we do to make award-winning games. Fuck it. Let's just go not do any of that. That's what they did with Inquisition. They know what Nightmare Mode was. And then they had the... Then they had the audacity to call that shit Nightmare with the option to turn friendly fire off with no tactics, with no nothing. With nothing that makes a Dragon Age game, as far as the gameplay goes, was in that game. It was slow. It was, it was so plodding, slow, doled down and fucked that it was actually slower than Dragon Age Origins, which was almost turn-based. It was slower than that. I move faster with momentum and haste in Dragon Age Origins, then I moved, and then, then they had the nerve in Dragon Age Inquisition to give, who was it, uh, not the Rift Mage, but the, uh, the Necromancer, to give you haste. Do you know what haste was? It didn't speed everything up, it stopped everything completely. You went from slow to so fucking slow that somebody needed to be talked bad to by their own grandma because she could outrun that fucking game. It was pathetic. And it was on purpose. Like, I, th I think what it boils down to in Inquisition is they didn't know how to um, work with the game engine. I don't, they were new to Frostbite. Frostbite was not a Dragon Age 2 thing. Frostbite came about with Dragon Age Inquisition. And basically, EA has licensed Frostbite, so that's what you're going to use. Unless you want to go buy your own fucking game engine. Other than that, you're using this. So they're left, you know, you work with the tools that you got. I get that. I get that. But... If you don't get the motor running, don't sell me the motherfucking cars if it's fixed. If, well, I got a whole new set of tools and I don't know what I'm doing. Well, then go learn how to use those tools, then fix my fucking engine, then give me my car back. But if my shit won't, still won't get me down the street, what did I pay you for? You know, so we didn't get a Dragon Age game, gameplay wise. Everything else was there. It's like there's obviously no lack of talent with Bioware when it comes to story writing, regardless if you agree or disagree with their ethics and morals and politics and gender stuff and, and, and whatever. whatever. Whatever Twitter was telling Bioware to write like that particular week is what you saw in Inquisition. I get that. But their ability still to develop characters, to create personality, you know, the face expressions, the, the playing the music at a certain time, they have some cinematic talent there that some of these people should probably be working in movies to be able to create emotionally impactful events in cutscenes. That's something Bioware's got. They've had it since Origins, they didn't lose it in Dragon Age 2, and they certainly didn't lose it in Inquisition. That was still there, but the gameplay shows them having um, none of those skills working with the Frostbite engine. It was slow, it was plotting. When the game had to crunch more than two or three numbers at a time, what did it do? It lagged and it didn't freeze all that often. I didn't get a lot of game crashes with Inquisition. It was pretty stable, especially considering the size of the game. It was pretty stable. There were a lot of glitches and bugs, but as far as just game crashing, no. But the lag, the lag was atrocious. 
You're telling me at a game running at one-tenth normal speed. Bitch, I played Origins. I played Dragon Age 2. I know what it's like to zip around like a hamster on crack cutting people in half at a thousand miles an hour. Just at, you're looking for an enemy to kill. Oh my God. You can just see your character fucking breathing heavy and shit and snot coming out your nose. Just <laughs> give me something else to kill, right? And then in Inquisition, it's like, okay. Everybody, take 300 Valium and just chill a while. Just pull out your weapons and we'll just fight over here, man. Like some high as fuck ass tripping hippie on psychedelics at Woodstock. Why the fuck are you going to fight at one mile an hour? Swinging your sword three times every five seconds. What is, what is the, when your DPS is lower than your sword, than your sword's base damage? Because you can't even swing more than once per second. How fucking stupid is that? That's pathetic. That is not fun. This is something that due to the nature of Dragon Age Inquisition, you can stand still and hold down your right button in certain areas of the game and shit will spawn inside your body getting hit by your weapon. You're just standing still. You can't stop fighting because shit's spawning out of thin air on top of you. It's not, not supposed to do that actually. I actually talked to one of the people that was responsible for developing Dragon Age Inquisition. Two people actually. Um, and uh, the idea the idea was, if it was within your cone of view, if it was in, within your line of sight, basically if it was within draw distance of you in the game, it should not and could not spawn or appear in front of you. Because the thing that they wanted to avoid in a game full of random spawns everywhere were each one of these spawn nodes dropping enemies out of the sky in front of you. It's okay if it happens on the hill on the other side of you or if it happens somewhere behind you and something sneaks up on you you don't have a problem with that but when you're standing there and a bear is standing on your head already hitting on you hitting you because it spawned another bear spawns on top of that bear and the spawn glitch is so fucked that six more bears spawn on top of that bear where you're standing there like you're in a barnum and bailey circus with nine bears stacked on top of your head like you're doing some clown balancing act what the fuck is that like bad bad the idea was that that actually couldn't happen in the game and it still happened. Everyone's been to Hafter's Woods and Dragon Age Inquisition and wanted to crack their game disc in half, go find somebody at Bioware and slap them with it until you cut their fucking face off. Bitch, the fuck you give me this trash and sell me this for 60 bucks. Everyone's been to Hafter Woods has wanted to do that at least once or else maybe I'm just psychotic. But everyone's experienced that. That didn't happen everywhere in the game because it actually wasn't supposed to happen. If it was within draw distance of the cone of sight, your detection radius, whatever you want to call it, it should not spawn. In other words, if you were staring at a spawn point, nothing should ever spawn there as long as you're looking at it. That was supposed to be a mechanic in the game. And most places in the game that works. Certain few places that it doesn't. But anyway, so while you are running around like that, fighting at one-tenth normal speed because the game engine can't handle that, and then when you finally do get into the fight, if you and Varric hit the same thing at the same time, the game stops, thinks about it, pulls out a fucking, it doesn't compute bits and kilobits and fucking megabits and megabytes and giga, no, no. It's computing a byte at a time on a piece of paper with a pencil. You can hear your fucking PS4 or your Xbox scratching lead on the pen. Let's see if this is what divided by that is, and then it would give you your damage number. What the fuck? Like, okay, I'm sorry, we're in next gen. Calculating basic damage numbers is not something that takes what is, in computer terms, a fucking millennium. It should be instant. At 10 times the speed at which I'm actually playing. It should still be instant. Dragon Age 2 was able to computationally do 75 times what Inquisition could do on a goddamn Xbox 360, and that's... That's so pitiful. That's so sad. Right? I'm not a computer programmer and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Well, then you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I do. Is I know when you, when you publish some shit like that, you, you're better off just not doing that. You're better off not doing that. I'd rather not give you a painting that I promised than give you some 
a chalk scratched across from canvas and give that to you and play it off like it's something that I... When you've seen my artwork before, you're like, what the fuck is that? You get your nephew with a crayon? You get vigiled out there in the glowing sea to fucking paint this painting for you and sell this shit to me? That's, that's kind of what Inquisition was like. It was like, wow, if you guys didn't know how to work with the engine, go, go learn it. Then come back and make your fucking game. Well, we're in, we're in time frame and this and that. We had, well, whatever. Guess what? Trying to push this out to get your dollar lost you. Bioware. Pat, 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 pat. Listen real close, Bioware. It lost you. Money, your entire fan base, the Bioware forums, possibly your entire development studio. You can really pin most of that. Well, no, that's Andromeda's fault. Mm -mm. No, Andromeda was destroyed before anyone ever even played it. It was already dead. No, no, this fire started with Inquisition because they had stopped making Dragon Age games. Well, Cassandra was so funny to listen to and I really liked Sarah and, Dor and Dorian was a cool character. That's all great. But once you've played the story, what makes you go back and play that game 300 more times? I'm still playing Origins and Dragon Age 2. I still play those, all right? Why do I have no, because there's, 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 there's no point. There's no test is if I come up with a Dragon Age Inquisition build and I present it to you, you're like, dude, I can just hold down my trigger and beat the game anyway. That's what I'm left with. You've given me nothing to work with. That's not just as a YouTuber, but that's as a player. I have, like, what, like what's the material here? When Inquisition first came out, it was funny to come up with builds until you realize it was futile. What's the fucking point? You're passing off this, and true, there was synergy in there, but there's no tactics to work with. There's no team elements and team play, not very little. You know, there's basically one setting for everybody to get to do their job, and then you don't have to think about them anymore, which was the point. The Skyrim thinking. Don't give the players anything to think about. To keep them happy, to keep them complacent, to give them instant gratification, and to make this game not worth 60 bucks three days after you fucking get it. That's the end result. So that's what they gained by pushing Inquisition out the fucking window about two years before it was ready to, for release. I was ready to get my hands all over it and it was nice to see a nice looking game, although I thought character creation was ass and it's the first next gen game I've ever seen where the hair looked five times worse than the previous installment of that game in a previous generation. Origins and Dragon Age 2, the hairstyles fit the art style of the game. They were okay. In Inquisition, the hairstyles looked worse than Mass Effect 1. That is a fact. Like, like my, like your three-year-old nephew took a fucking dull chisel, found some frozen llama shit, scratched a couple fucking lines in it, and slapped it on your character's head. And then you could paint it some god-awful glowing shit where the, oh, uh, what's the word for it? The alpha on the mesh is glowing so goddamn bright that your hair becomes this neon fucking sign at a gay bar that you're running around on your head with in the middle of your game. If you make it anything other than basically black, any other color on your hair and it's just shit so ridiculously glowing unnatural that you're like, what the fuck? And it already looks like something sculpted out of frozen shit and plastic badly and it's off center on your head. Like your hairline is either gonna start behind your goddamn ears or two inches above your goddamn unibrow. And you've got some of the best, I think, mechanics to work with to sculpt your face. And then you sabotage the face with, with caveman brows, llama shit hair, and fucking artificial coloring that it's impossible. Like your, your, your eyes, if you, oh, especially if you're making a female character, your eye makeup is either glowing purple or pearlescent black. And that's it. And your lips about the same. And then, you, I mean, it's, it's just, it's horrible. It's, it's fucking god awful. It, and the character creation tools are amazing. Like, how do, you, how do you take something that's foolproof and fuck it off completely where it's completely worthless? How do you do that? Like, you have to try to do that. You have to try to do that. How, you know, they rushed it. They rushed it. Character creation wouldn't have been like that in Inquisition. Honestly, had they had another year or two in Dragon Age Inquisition, you want to know one other element that I'm positive they would have had? And I say this because I look at the, uh, um, the Descent DLC 
and I look at the, uh, the one with uh, Egghead at the end where you actually go to the Canary homelands and you actually get to see where the Canary come from, uh, whatever their, their little island is called. Anyway, um, you actually get to go, go there. I believe those maps from The Descent and from, I can't remember the name of the DLC with, with uh, Solus and all that shit where you eventually wind up in the Canary lands. But I believe those maps would have been your origin in Inquisitions. Remember in Inquisition, they give you that cheap ass little, well, we just saved a, a thousand hours of game development by just not including this in the game. Fuck you. Just take a paragraph. Um, you're this person who's here because paragraph says so and you came from some area. We're not going to show you that. And there was drama there, but we're not going to tell you about that either. And your character is just your character from over there. And you wound up here and you're in the fade. That's it. That's what you get. In Dragon Age Origins, you started there, got pissed off at somebody while you were there, so you had something other than Corypheus to focus on. You were going to go find that motherfucker somewhere in the game and kick his ass for raping your sister or your wife or killing your parents or, or fucking you over down in the deep roads or doing something to you or screwing you out of your little fun time with your corrupted mirror or whatever. You're going to go kick somebody's ass. And then you're going to kick Logan's ass. Then you're going to kick the Archdemon's ass. Not necessarily in that order. Origins was epic. So in Inquisition, what do they give you? Um, you sort of started over there, but you don't actually get to start there. We're just going to tell you that you started there and that's your origin. And so now you're here in the fade and yeah, you pop out and start getting yelled at by somebody who you really can't kill because they're story specific. Lazy? Pathetic? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Is there a reason Bioware, if they haven't failed yet, they're failing? There you go. There you go. We had to rush it out because EA made us. They, they very well may have, and that may actually be the reason. It's still not an excuse. Is if you're an artist, you, I'm sorry, I can't sign off on some shit like that. You know, you make a Van Gogh and you make a Picasso, then you make a crayon on a piece of toilet paper stuck in a frame made out of matchsticks. Yeah, sorry, man. Yeah, that, does, that doesn't fly. That's not going up at auction. Nobody's buying that shit. Next thing you know, Bioware's dead. I think it was Inquisitions. I, I would pin it on Inquisition. Andromeda should have been a success. And they, like I say, they destroyed that before it even had a chance to get off the ground. So, yeah. Monster Hunter World. Um... The mindless grind, I like mindless grinding game if you're at least grinding for something. I don't get that out of Monster Hunter. It's got beautiful graphics, like every other game coming out that I'm not playing and nobody else is playing a week later. Sorry. I'm perfectly aware it's sitting on my shelf and I'm perfectly aware of the amount of dust that is collecting on it. And how much more dust will collect on it before I eventually wipe the dust off and still leave it on my shelf. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Oh, well. Uh, you know what they need to do? But I guess they can't. Because I guess without... I guess without a, a proficiency with the frostbite engine. I guess without being proficient that there's, it's just never going to happen. But a remaster of all three games, sorry. You take the best of Origins, Dragon Age 2, and Inquisition, and you put it in these. But what you have to write for Inquisition is an origin. Corypheus isn't enough. Corypheus comes off as a side battle at the end. In fact, it's so laughably easy. It's such a joke. You can't believe that's the end game battle. It's completely ridiculous. But setting all that aside, that's actually forgivable, in my opinion. Some people might not think so, but I can forgive that if I've got another villain to fight during the game. You've got plenty of game and plenty of opportunity to do so. Amongst the Templars, amongst the Elves, amongst the Venatori, and whoever. But your origin needs to start with you confronting or dealing with something 
that pertains to the side drama that happens in the game, right? You need to have some personal attachment to that. Like if you're a Tal Vashoth and you're coming from here, then some of the things that happen at the end of that DLC with Solus, right, need to be creating drama for you at the beginning of the game. You have to have an origin. And when they remaster Dragon Age 2, you have to at least have a Hawk origin. You have It's got to be something other than you all scaping together on the road. That's fine. But once you get to Kirkwall, there has to be more of your first year in Kirkwall while you're working off your servitude. There should not only be a rogue band and a warrior band, but there should also be an underground mage band, depending on the start of your character. It would have been very easy with Hawk. You would have been able to... It would suck for you, but I could see him playing this into the game. Actually come across Anders, illegally smuggling blood mages into Kirkwall, as well as smuggling mages out, and see, like Jowen was in the Mage Origin and Dragon Age Origins, the same way. You see that he's not even someone to sympathize with. He's bad through and through, using this Mage Rebellion as an excuse to be a fucking serial predator. It is what he is, right? But you would get to see that with a Hawk Origin in the, in the Circle Underground if you start as a Mage. If you start as a Rogue, of course you've got a Thinril. Something needs to happen between you and a Thinril to where that confrontation you have with a Thinril when the game actually starts is more than just, you screwed me over and took my gold in the marketplace. That shouldn't really even be an option in Dragon Age 2. I have a sneaky suspicion that it was never going to be an option in Dragon Age 2. That what that was essentially designed to do was allow your character, your hawk, to have an origin. Your origin during that year one would have been the same thing as your origin in Dragon Age Origins leading up to Ostagar. You would have, you would have experienced some things in the circle as to the real side of things, how the Templars weren't all boogeymen and how the mages were, were more guilty than any of them would admit. You would see that as a warrior amongst the Templars starting that. Even if you weren't going to be a Templar, you would still have that as your background. And you would get to, you would have a reason to play all three games, right? There's an, there's an achievement in Dragon Age 2 for starting, go, playing through the tutorial with all three classes. It's the fucking point. It's the same tutorial. It's irrelevant. It's an achievement. You get it because it's cheap, but you're like, no. There's supposed to be an origin. I honestly believe this. There was supposed to be an origin. Once you get to meet Varric, the game basically goes on as it goes. Dragon Age Origins was like that. After Ostagar, it didn't really matter who you were. It all kind of played out the same. You might have a particular boogeyman that you had to go even, even the score with at some point in the game, but other than that, it was pretty much the same. But it felt different because you were someone different, and you had somebody's ass to kick. Other than just the Archdemon. That's the obvious. Obvious enemy is obvious. But where's, where's that one special bad guy that gives you that sense of justice and revenge when you finally get to put their head on a pike? That's what mattered. That's what made Origins amazing. That, probably more than anything else. Dragon Age 2 would have had that. They only had 11 months to make that. Inquisition, they gave them extra time, but it still wasn't enough. Because everybody's like, you're giving us this tool to work with. I don't know the difference between a goddamn wrench and a screwdriver with the frostbite system. Fuck it, let's just try to make it work. No tactics, no nightmare mode, um, slow-ass, boring fucking combat. In a game where you have to fight Inquisition, how much time in Inquisition do you actually spend fighting? Well, you spend 40% of the game picking, picking elf root, 50% of the game fighting, and 10% fucking with cutscenes, trying to get in someone's pants, and eventually finding out that the Corypheus endgame battle was absolute bullshit. But the rest of that is picking elf root and fighting. So if you're going to be fighting roughly half of your 150, 200 game hours that you spend in that game, whatever it may be, it ought to be fun at least sometimes. But no, this shit is two miles an hour. I could swing a fucking 20 pound great sword faster than that. And I can barely pick one up. Boring, boring. It, it has to be in there. And then like I say that, that, that spell haste that just makes everything stop. I, I, I laughed. I laughed out loud. I'm like, okay, this is boring as fuck. What you need, this is what I'm thinking, Dragon Age Inquisition. You need a mage with haste. I saw haste was built into the Reaver tree, so I couldn't conceive the possibility that at least decent semi-fun combat was at least possible in the game. I couldn't conceive the possibility that they had left anything resembling fun out of Dragon Age Inquisition. I just couldn't conceive that. 
Because I'm like, I'm looking in the Reaver tree and I'm like, there's speed there. And you can. You can increase your attack speed up to like 40-50%, which makes it about half the speed of Dragon Age 2 on normal. And about the same speed as Dragon Age Origins, which was almost turn-based, like I said. So here you are, and I'm like, okay, Dorian has haste. Okay, so this gives you incentive to unlock everyone's skill tree, and whether you're playing a mage or whether you've got mages in your party, shit, I'm going to bring Dorian along. All right, hit haste, Dorian, let's do this. <sighs> then everything stopped. And I, I'm like, what the fuck is that? You, you, haste is, haste is a staple. Tactics, nightmare mode, haste. It's like, this is, this is bread, water, and dinner table for Dragon Age games. And you took all of it out? You, you removed it. That, making everything stop isn't haste, bitch. It just means I'm still moving slow as fuck and everything's just not moving at all. Well, it makes you faster if everything else just stops. If you're moving at all, that makes you faster, right? Fuck you, Bioware. Eat 3,000 of these, please. Because no, that's not, a, that's, not a, that's not a valid argument. No. Making everything fast and fun doesn't mean making everything stop. Stupid. Stupid. Well, it's the only way we could get it to work with it. You know, Oh, you know what? I, I'd at least respect it if someone at Bioware would come out and say that. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing with the Frostbite engine, and we had to have that shit out or else EA was going to fucking penalize everybody. Oh, okay. Well, it's still not an excuse, but at least it's a reason. You know? But, well, we didn't even get that. All right, Snipes. Have a good one, man. Anyway. So... I still got Dark Souls Remastered, but that's one of those things where I got to be in the mood to play. And then when I play, I play for like several days, back to back, like I just get obsessed. Got to be kind of in the mood for that. Plus, I got a buddy that I've been playing with. It came, came up with, if you play Dark Souls, uh, one thing, if you haven't tried this before, most of you guys who have played forever have, got, have already done your like level one... Um, Dark Wraith, you know, Pyromancer, right? Everyone's, everyone's probably done that. But one thing is to go through Dark Souls and uh, start with each class and play into whatever that class does. Like the Sorcerer is obvious. The Cleric is obvious. You know, you got Miracles. You got, you got Sorcery. The Knight is obvious, you know. Um, and use whatever's at your disposal, but set your level cap at 20. Don't ever level past 20. 23 is also a good number, but... I, I think souls is supposed to be unforgiving. So a, a level 20 and like, okay, if you're playing like a warrior, which would theoretically favor two-handed weapons. If you're playing a knight, which would favor sword and shield. You, I mean, you could do whatever you want, or whatever. So if you're playing a warrior and a two-handed weapon, how can you get away with uh, running around with Big Z, for example, which is probably the lightest great sword and still have the stats to even be able to use it and still equip whatever whatever armor you can right and then you've got to factor in well how fast do you want to roll um you know how do you want to play because at level 20 you're not going to have near enough endurance no matter what rings you've got on right unless you stack like the ring of favor and havel's ring but then you you know then like the ring of the abyss when you go fight the four kings you've got to take one of those off that means you're slower rolling now than whatever you were rolling. You know what I'm saying? So you like you have to really figure out what weapon, armor sets, and play style you want to play and then work around that. You may find that you have to sink every point you've got into just your weapon and nothing else. And wherever wear whatever rings you can to compensate for that and find a way through the game like that. And it's you know, for for veterans of Dark Souls, that's not that big of a deal. But it is fun coming up with a min-max build at level 20. With a, with a level 20 cap, it is actually really fun. You can actually make a proficient. It's probably not good for like new game plus plus. You know, at some point you're going to want to compensate for. You might want to add some levels for each for each new game that you play with that character. You know, add 10 levels or just five. Five levels for each one. You know, so maybe you can upgrade a weapon. Sink those few extra points into something that you need for something in particular. You know, that's a, something to try, man.
Yeah, Sheepy, there's a challenge to where you don't have any weapons or armor at all and you just run around and, and take three hours to kill everything with fists and die a lot trying. And there's challenges. Yeah, okay. There's stuff. That's, that's just a particular thing. If you know 37 other, other challenges to trump my challenge with, great. I was just throwing it out there. You, can't, you don't like it, can't respect it, th please throw it in the shitter. Quietly. That'd be great. All right, well, I think I'm out, man. You guys take it easy. If I think of something to play later this evening, I'll probably be back on. If not, then I guess I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. And uh, we'll give Defiance another week and see if it doesn't uh, get its shit together. <laughs>